Hi, thank you. Well, he may have already asked my question, but I want to ask this question again. What did you want to be when you were a kid? Odds are you didn't actually know most of the professions. You only knew of being a doctor or a firefighter, or in the case of my generation, a professional video gamer. Now I grew up in a family of boys. I had three older brothers who I looked up to and admired. Everything they did, I wanted to do. Except when it came to choosing school and career. In this case, we all went incredibly separate ways. While two of my brothers went into immigration and settlement studies and being a technical systems analyst, my oldest brother went into nursing and I went into biomedical engineering. So we, won't, we went into fields that were predominantly female and predominantly male. And I hadn't really understood that until this point, people actually use gender to stereotype what careers people go into. And what they do is they'll justify it by saying, girls aren't good at math and men aren't very caring. So my grade 12 calculus class had 27 women in it and three men. So imagine my surprise when I get to university calculus class and this ratio is flipped on its head. Very, very surprising. But not nearly as surprised as when I found out that people actually use this to generalize. They said, hey, girls, they're not good at math because look at this. There, there's not very many of them here. They're not interested in physics. But I liked math and I liked physics. It's true, there aren't a lot of women in engineering. The national average spread across all programs in 2009 for female enrollment was 17.4%. And as you can see, this trend isn't significantly changing. Sorry. Um, but does that really mean that girls aren't good at math? In 2009, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development did a study and found that girls were just as likely to be top performers as boys in the areas of reading, math, and science. So now let's take a deeper look at the actual fields of engineering. When we look at engineering applied to the healthcare field or the environment, we see that there's a huge spike in the number of women enrolled, nearly 40%. Now take those same concepts and just apply them to something slightly different, and you'll see there's a huge decline, only 13% in areas that are computer, electrical, and mechanical. So it's not that women aren't capable of doing this. It may just be that they want to apply it in a different way. So what we're doing with them by doing this is we're putting people into boxes and saying, here's what boys do and here's what girls do. So what do you think of when you think of an engineer? The head of an engineering consulting company once said to me, his concern for engineering was that we weren't appealing to enough people. Now some of you may have had the image of a man in work boots and a hard hat when you think of engineering. But the problem with this image is that it doesn't appeal to everyone, and it doesn't actually show all the types of engineering out there, the ways you can apply it, and the amount of diversity in engineering. So a young woman who doesn't necessarily have as much life experience may look at this and say, oh, hey, this doesn't really appeal to me, or this doesn't reflect who I am, and I don't really think I can apply everything that I know in this field. So that is a problem. But this isn't only with women in male-dominated fields. It's also with men in female-dominated fields. Take nursing, for example. We often hear that men aren't as caring. OK. But let's think about this. When you say something like that, you're actually influencing how people see themselves. You can make these things come true. If you tell someone that enough, they'll say, oh, hey, maybe I'm not very caring. But when you actually think about, say a boy goes into engineering instead of nursing, is he no longer a caring individual? Engineers design our infrastructure, our machinery, and our technological innovation. But they're also in charge of our safety, our environment, and our health. So we're actually doing the same thing to them, putting them into a box and saying, hey, this is what you should really be doing. This is the type of person that you are. But we need to be opening up possibilities to the next generation so that they feel comfortable doing everything. 
So these barriers don't necessarily affect everyone. In fact, there's a lot of people who do feel comfortable breaking them. I meet a lot of engineering students across Canada, and a number of women have said to me that they were told specifically not to go into engineering because it's for boys. This, however, caused them to do the exact opposite. They went into engineering and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. But why, why did they have to break this barrier in the first place? Why was it even there? In fact, I looked around at my student organizations with my school, my province, and nationally, and I saw that there is a very equal distribution of men and women in these organizations. I thought, we have so few women, why are they all so involved? I thought about it. These are the women who have to break these stereotypes. They already are so determined to go above and beyond. That's why we're seeing them here. And it's great that they're becoming such powerful role models, but at the same time, what about the people who don't want to break barriers? What about the people who want to do something but just feel they can't? You don't need to be a trailblazer just to get into your career. You should be able to do it anyways. That's right. So, Getting people open up into new fields is not just for them, it's for us as well. We need more engineers, 50% actually, according to a work study. We're often getting these engineers from foreign countries instead because we're simply not supplying enough. But adding qualified women to the field will help us fill this gap. And on top of that, having diversity in any field drives innovation and productivity. A study shows that Companies that have greater diversity have a 35% greater return on equity than companies that don't have that same diversity. We need people to be diverse in their fields. That's how we're gonna get places. That's how we're gonna get new ideas. Yes, men and women are different, but that means that they can contribute different things. Ideas shape the world around us and we need everyone to be contributing to this. But there are already steps being taken towards this. Engineers Canada has a goal of 30% by 2030. And the Canadian, or sorry, the Ontario Network of Women in Engineering has a program called Go Eng Girl, which works with local universities to get girls interested in engineering. So it's for girls grades seven to 10, where they can come learn about engineering, participate in hands-on activities, and see student design projects. This is a great influence to get girls looking at engineering ahead of time, to get them interested in it something that's not necessarily available to them. But these things start even earlier. So let's stop for a moment and look at the types of toys that are given to both boys and girls. Boys are given toys to build with, and girls are given more dolls and things like that. But the thing is, why can't you combine that? Why are there no toys out there that aren't just gender neutral or for boys? Why don't they celebrate femininity at the same time as allowing girls to learn problem-solving skills? Well, this is changing now with new toys like Goldie Blocks. This is a startup that combines things like reading with building something. And this is fascinating because it allows us to help change a trend because it gets girls to learn a new skill and it opens them up to a world of possibilities. But still one of the most powerful influencers is role models. And we often forget how important this is. At one point or another, I'm sure you all have had a role model or a mentor. And at one point or another, you'll probably all be that role model. I myself have had many role models in my life, ranging from family who build you up to be whatever you wanna be, to a teacher who introduces you to engineering in the first place, to women in the field who understand the importance of mentorship and speak out on it. But I also understand the importance of carrying this on, the importance of being a role model for others. I used to babysit a little girl, and when she was three, she told me she wanted to be an engineer. At the time, I didn't know what an engineer was at all. But I found out later it was because her dad had taken engineering in school. So later on, when I did the same and I took engineering, she now had a network of people around her who were showing her that this was a viable option, that you could do this, and there is nothing holding her back from that and she started gaining the skills that she's gonna need for that field now, early on. So she's 13 now, and I strongly believe that having those role models in her life was a positive thing, because it allows her to still look at engineering, which she's doing today. 
So we can change this trend. We can break down these barriers and we can give everyone an equal chance to do what interests them. We can stop putting people into the box and letting them decide what they want to do. Instead of generalizing people to hold them back, let the differences make things better. So changing your perspective on the way you view gender stereotypes and careers not only changes your views, but how you pass them on. So here's what I'd like you to do today. Make a change in a young person's life. If you know a young woman, tell her about Goenge Girl. Let her explore her opportunities and get excited about it. If she's not old enough for that yet, get her a set of Goldie Blocks so she can start developing new skills early on. And most importantly, be a role model. Change their perspective. Help them break stereotypes. Because if we all start breaking down these barriers, there won't be any left. And the next generation won't have to worry about what box they fit into. Thank you.